Good morning, college. It's wonderful to see you in chapel today. If you want to come down to the front, I hope you're ready to praise God in this place. Here we go.
one voice we sing. Your name 
things and your situation is no surprise to him so I want to talk about a couple of the things that we're gonna be praying for but I also want us to be ready to do battle we're gonna go right back into worship and we're gonna leave these things in the hand of God 
and we're going to see miracles happen. Do you believe that? Okay, somebody believing for a job, people believing for healing, people, a lot of people believing for healing actually, people believing for breakthrough in finances, jobs, housing situations, financial situations, healing situations, healing situations, people believing for agreements and uh, re reconciliation. You know, if we know that we're coming to a good Heavenly Father, we're not twisting His arm, we're not begging, we're asking. We're asking a God who is faithful. And we're gonna do that right now together as a college and then we're gonna go back in to just worship God one more time because it's the name of Jesus that causes every knee to bow and every tongue to confess. Amen, which is so powerful. We're gonna leave these in God's hands, the not only able God, but the willing, good, heavenly Father, amen? Let's agree together. Why don't you put your hands forward towards these requests and let's pray and stir up your faith. Let's stir it up together, college. Father, we're believing for turnaround in situations. We are thanking you, Father, for healing in people's bodies. We're declaring that you are the healer, that God, we can do all things through you. Father, you're a faithful God, a financial provision God. Jobs, Lord, where somebody else couldn't find a job, our students will find jobs. Where somebody else might not have had a situation come together, you are gonna bring a breakthrough right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you. Let's worship the again, college. We'll shake and tremble before him. Chains will break as heaven and earth sing. Holy is the name. Holy is the name of Jesus. Jesus. Do you feel like you left it in God's hands? How good is that? You know, some people were thanking God. The very same situations that we were praying for this morning have actually been answered in people's lives. Listen to this, $5,000 provision. I love that. Nothing's too hard for God. Nothing's too hard for God. Somebody thanking God for healing and people thanking God for intensives and people thanking God for Duncan Corby. Of course, we all thank God for Duncan Corby. And thanking God for classes and, and provision and, you know, how faithful is our God. Why don't you say hello to somebody and why don't you find yourself back to your seats and welcome everyone and say hello.
We're about to link with our city campus. And when we do, we need to give a big shout from the Hills campus to the city. So let's just keep an eye on what's happening up here. But it's so good to have everybody here together. Have everybody back. Welcome back, those of you who have come back. Who's starting second year? Who's starting third year? So good to have you. It's very good to have you here. Who's just carrying on because you're awesome? Well, what we're going to do right now is we're going to link over to our Hills campus. I can see Angela Barkley on the screen. Hi, Katrina. It's so good to see you, Angela. How's everything at the Hills campus this morning? We're doing awesome, as you can hear. Well, so I think the city campus should probably say a big hello to our Hills campus. So good, so good. I love it. I love that we're here together doing chapel at the same time on Wednesdays and we get to do family across both campuses. It's gonna be fantastic. And, um, <laughs> got a clown already here. There's always one. He's probably first year. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know if everyone's still standing there at the Hills campus, but we've just had, uh, we've just prayed for some prayer requests. I don't know if there's any great praise reports from the Hills campus that you could share with us to encourage us over here in the city. Yes, Katrina, we actually had um, somebody put through that they're believing for a provision. And today in the praise reports, they said that $5,000 had come in and, and answered a prayer. So we were all celebrating for that one. Yeah. That is amazing. I love that. We're in the season of the miraculous. Well, you know what? I think uh, what probably would be a great idea right now is if we find a seat on both campuses, if you haven't done that already at our Hills campus, uh, because right now, the beautiful Angela, who is one of our Phenomenal Hills trainers, she's going to share with us. Many of us already know about our Nation Builders giving, but for those of you who are new students, this is something that we love to do and that we're a part of as a part of the big picture of church life. She's going to frame for us and share with us around our Nation Builders giving. So why don't we give Angela a huge cheer and a huge welcome as she does that across the link. Beautiful. Thanks, Katrina. Yeah, it is an absolute honour to share around our missions giving and our first one of this semester. And um, when I was asked to share around our missions giving today, I had a, a, a word on the inside that actually I feel like the Lord gave me about sharing today, which I felt was absolutely going to be inspiring for you and something to take away and actually something for God to speak to you about over this semester. And as you're preparing, it'd be great if you could prepare either on, by envelope or um, getting cash out and all of our um, hosts will come and serve you in just a moment. You know, missions giving is one of the parts that we can play to actually, it's a selfless act. It's one of those things where we can actually participate with God in creating a God encounter for someone else. And this is what I felt the Lord asked me to share about today. In Genesis 28, Jacob has just been blessed by his father and he left his home. And he went out and he fell asleep and he had a dream. And in this dream, he had a God encounter. In this God encounter, he, it was his, as some say, would it be his first encounter with God. And in this encounter, he wakes up after God speaks to him and talks to him about who he is and what God has promised over his life, he wakes up and he says, surely God was in this place and I didn't know it. And when I read that, I thought, you know, I believe that he wasn't expecting God to show up. And I thought in missions giving, how many times are people on the other side of our generosity not expecting God to show up in their life? They're not actually expecting to hear from God today. They're not believers yet. They don't have a relationship, a connection with God. And then in verse 17 of Genesis 28, it says this, uh, Jacob said this, he was afraid and said, basically, God is awesome in this place. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gateway of heaven. 
And I felt to share with you as a college that when we give in missions giving, it's planting churches, it's television ministry, it's so many different ways that we actually bring a God encounter of Jesus Christ into people's life, which is the gateway to heaven. And I thought, how amazing that we get to play our part. So this morning, as you've prepared, I want you to remember that you're making a way for someone to have a God encounter. The gateway to heaven, which is the house of God, which is Jesus Christ. And that's what we're all about. Are you ready to give? I wanna pray for you, but hosts, if you could come and get ready to serve the college, that would be great. All hosts get into their places. And let me pray for you. You have your offering in your hands. We're a generous college, aren't we? We are, we're a generous college and we get to partner with people around the world. So I'm gonna pray. Let's hold our offering in our hand. Father, I thank you that you're a generous God and we are a generous people. I pray, Father, as we sow in to other people's God encounters, we're gonna see other people encounter you and say, I was not expecting this, but I have met with God today. I have found Jesus Christ, the gateway to heaven. And I pray, Father, that would be all of our desires. That would be our greatest heart's cry is to help partner with the church across the planet to see the kingdom advance and to see every person meet Jesus Christ. And we thank you for your faithfulness and we thank you for every giver today and we ask that you'd bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can the hosts please serve the college? That would be great. Thanks, Katrina. Great job, Angela. What a mighty woman. Incredible woman. I love that, you know, we are in an environment, especially those of you who are new, that places value on womanhood. We place value on manhood as well, but uh, it's just really great to be surrounded by incredible men and women of God in the house. And for all of you who haven't realised yet, sisterhood starts back tomorrow. And... Uh, it's starting back with a bang because Robert and Amanda Ferguson are going to be in sisterhood tomorrow across all of our campuses. It's going to be fantastic. So that's going to be wonderful. But you know what? Right now I want to introduce, formally introduce, you all know him. You all love him. You all probably have already heard that he has a new role. But I would love to welcome to the stage on both campuses for you to stand for our new Executive Vice President, Pastor Lee Burns. He's gonna come and say hi to everyone. Our fearless leader, come on. Ah, uh, hello everybody. Uh -huh. Hi to everyone in the city. It is a, uh, it is a huge honour to step into what we're about to step into and, uh, and kind of take the helm of that. And, uh, and I, I know I told our, our new returning city guys the other day that when we sing oceans now, we're not singing oceans as in our leaders are going to step out of the boat and we're just going to sit in there and stay comfortable. We're singing oceans as in you are going to be led out where your trust is without borders. We are taking you with us wherever we go on this journey that we're about to step into. And so get ready to see more of the miraculous, more of the impossible become possible, more of the supernatural, because that's where we're about to launch. And so to... Everyone in the city, uh, I don't know that you know this yet, I guess many of you have assumed, I announced it yesterday at the Hills campus, but Katrina is the principal over both campuses now, both city and Hills campus. I was, I was always told that she was twice the principal that I ever was, so I thought I'd give her the opportunity to step into that. And so now she's got both campuses, <laughs> which is really cool. They're all sitting here like, oh, really, was she? Have we missed out? No, you haven't missed out. God is still good anyway. And so, <laughs> that's all right. They're still getting to know my humor here at the Hills. But, uh, but City, I'm really looking forward to, uh, I'll be out there tomorrow afternoon with our second years, be out there next week to, uh, to do chapel with you all. But uh, I'm also excited for this next season for Mary Kappa in the city as well and seeing her step into everything that God is about to bring across her path and so I believe that 
you know, God has kind of given us the right structure in order to move the, the college now from where it is in order to go to where we're going to go in the next couple of years, and, uh, and we are launching out. And so, City, I just wanted to say hi, and, um, and looking forward to being with you a whole lot more this semester. And uh, Katrina, I'm going to let you go and continue to preach on the miraculous. So all the best, have fun, and uh, God bless you all. Amen. Beautiful. You may be seated. I think that is the last thing that we need to stand and work out. And so I think we're all worked out from here on in. What I haven't done, you guys may be seated. Come on, look at you. What I haven't done is, uh, is announce um, or introduce you to uh, Cameron McDonald. So Cam, come up here for one moment. Boom. How cool is his hairstyle? I, no, not yours. Yours is cool too. His, 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 his I was like about a, to say, I'm just trying to copy you, well, you Bernsie. You're just so super cool. Oh, well, you, you got more Doing facial can. hair. I can't grow that. <laughs> so you're kind of cooler. But, uh, but this is uh, Cam McDonald. For those of you that don't know him, him and his wife, Suzanne... No. No? <laughs> Susanna. Uh, they have been running our 11 a.m. service here at the Hills for a number of years, and uh, Cam came through college in around 06, 07? Yep, yeah. in around there, and um, then went on and did his degree and is continuing on his studies. And, uh, and so we, um, we kind of spoke to him back in May and said, would you like to come and work with us in college? And he kind of jumped at the idea. And so, uh, so now we've got Cam as part of our training staff, which is unbelievable. <laughs> So, here's my question to you. What do you believe in God for this semester? Um, I am believing God for the miraculous, definitely. And um, for me, I've always had a heart to see our students equipped to do the work of the ministry. And um, I really believe that as a student body, um, you guys aren't just here to be, um, you know, just members of teams and doing all that kind of stuff, but you're actually here to make an impact that lasts beyond your time here. Mm -hmm. And so I'm actually really believing to see our student body equipped to make an impact that lasts in our church and also the kind of impact that they're going to be able to take back into their world, whether they go back home to their own church or join campuses around the place, they're actually going to be able to take that and actually make a huge impact back there as well. So that's what I'm believing for. Pretty cool, pretty yeah. cool. You're a great pastor, that's for sure. He's, he's probably one of the greatest pastors that, uh, you know, we kind of got at Hillsong Church, especially for his age. And, um, and you know, he, he, he runs our hosting teams, which, um, which yeah, yeah, all the, all the faithful hosts. And, um, and, but this guy's unbelievable at it. And, uh, and honestly, I've, I've never, um, there's only kind of three other guys that I've seen do what he's able to do, and, uh, and still at the end of the whole thing, love people and love Jesus. And uh, <laughs> you know, if, it, if it was me with some of the stuff he puts up on hosting, I'd be stepping back and calling down fire. Lord, <laughs> take them home in Jesus' name. I'll help you bring them home. And, uh, and so this guy's absolutely amazing. You're going to love him. He's one of the best disciples of young people that I've ever seen. And so uh, you're going to love his impact in and through lectures. And, uh, and great to have you on college, finally. It took us forever to get you here. It's good, to be here. here. it's good yeah. to be here. It's good to be here. I pray for you. Yeah. Ah. Can I get you all to stand, and we're just going to put our hand towards him and pray for him. Amen. I might get one of our great first year, uh, second year head students to pray for you. Is that cool? Yeah, go for it. Come on, Sammy. Come on, pray. For <laughs> thank oh, you, let's Jesus. pray. God, thank you so much for who you are. That we can even be in this college with you, and we just lift Cam up to you right now. Thank you, God, that you've called him to be such a great pastor and now trainer for us. God, I pray that you would just anoint him to teach us the way that only you can. God, I pray that you'd make him such a man of influence in our college that guys like us can just look up to him, learn from him, God, and, and just really do life with him. Thank you so much that you placed him here. God, I pray that you only use him for, for great things in your kingdom. God, we love you so much. Thank you for who you are in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen, Amen. you guys may be seated. Well, God is good. God is good, Margaret. To hell with the devil, God is good. Amen. Amen. For those of you that come from nations where hell is a swear word, it's all right. It's actually a Bible word. And, uh, 
and the devil came from there and he pops his head up from there from time to time to try and take authority over believers, but we as believers have authority over him to put him back from where he came, amen? And so he'll continue to try and put his mark on you, whether it be by sickness or poverty or whatever it may be, but you have every authority to talk back, speak back, and put him back in his place because he is defeated and you have authority in Jesus' name, amen? Amen. Smith Wigglesworth was an English guy. He was from Bradford. And he was just like you two. <laughs> and he was an English guy who got filled with the Holy Spirit at the age of 48. And his ministry started at the age of 48. Up until then, he, continued, he went to church with his wife and went to church with his family, but when he got filled with the Holy Spirit at 48, he'd never read up until that point. He was a plumber by trade, and he began to sit down, and his wife began to teach him to read, and his wife was a preacher, and, and so she began to teach him the Bible. The only book he ever read was the Bible. The only book he ever allowed to educate him was the Bible. Now, I'm not saying... You, we've got to do the same thing, but I am saying this is how important the Bible is to us. He never prayed longer than 30 minutes, but he never went 30 minutes without praying. Every opportunity he had, he always had a little New Testament in his top pocket, and every opportunity he had, he would read the Bible to get it into him to learn how is it that I, I, I can interact with God and with people and, uh, and with the world. It is recorded that he raised 17 people from the dead, one being his own wife. And so the guy was absolutely amazing. He had conviction. He knew exactly what God had called him to do. We're, we're going back now in the early 1900s. His ministry was quite gruff. He would punch people. But he always said, I'm not punching the person, I'm punching the devil. <laughs> at one point they come and put a baby that was sick on the platform platform was only this high I believe a foot high and uh, they put a baby there to be prayed for and he kicked the baby off the platform the baby hit the ground it was totally par paralyzed but when the baby hit the ground it started moving and crying the parents picked him up totally healed He went to do a funeral for a seven-year-old uh, seven boy and halfway through the funeral he felt the Lord say, it's too early. So he wrecked the funeral, raised the boy up, gave him back to the parents, funeral was over. <laughs> he was a devoted follower of Jesus Christ. I want to talk this morning on seven signs of a devoted disciple. Seven signs of a devoted disciple. You see, I believe that miraculous is possible for each and every one of us. I believe that this year, some of you are going to step into things that you thought were impossible, but God's going to show you they're possible. Can I say this? Don't take them for granted just because it's possible. And you're going to begin to see things that you've never seen before. Because you're in an environment where we, that even part of the leadership, sit back and go, God, what are you doing? We even sit back and scratch our heads and think, why Australia? Who would have picked Australia? Right? Not, not me. Yet God is doing something here that is starting to impact the world. Never write your city off. Never think that God can't do anything there because if you're there, God can do something. I love the testimonies of people now. I don't know, for some reason, Scandinavia just kind of, I love it so much. Because, because Scandinavians come here with this, I can't do it, and they go home with, devil, get out of the way, we can do it. And I love what God is doing over there at the moment in raising up local churches. You only had to go back 10 years, and Margaret can confirm this, 10 years, and there were very uh, few churches up over 200. You go over there now, there's churches up over 1,000. It's going to continue to increase and get greater and greater. 
What God is doing in Germany is just a miracle. It's an absolute miracle of God. What God is doing in Germany right now but what he's doing right now doesn't compare to what he's about to do in the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now. What God is do doing in Europe is amazing. Going back 15 years, it was the darkest days in Europe. Well, now light is coming to Europe in ways that we never thought was possible. Imagine what the next 30 years is gonna look like. America. <laughs> I just want to say the word, really. <laughs> it's always been amazing what God does in America. Man, America is, is, is an amazing, amazing nation. A lot of the major ministries that impact the whole world come from America or have significant influence in America. America... There's nothing like it. Doesn't mean it's perfect though. Still needs a lot of work. Asia. <laughs> I just wanted to check that where, the, where the volume level of our Asian community is at the moment. All right, we've got some work to do there. Let's believe God for... The impossible, that, uh, that by the time we get to the end of semester, that the Asians will be louder than the Americans. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> but when it comes to discipleship, when it comes to discipleship, there is a part to play from you. Discipleship is not only the responsibility of the master, but it has a lot to do with the obedience of the follower. In Luke's gospel, Luke devotes pretty much five chapters from chapter 14 through to chapter 19 on the cost of discipleship and, and showing what it really means to be a disciple. I preached on this passage of scripture just recently. I'm going to go there because I want to look at it from the point of view of the way Luke's community would have understood this text when it comes to the cost of discipleship. Go with me to Luke 17, verse 11. Luke 17, verse 11. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back. Uh, the, the, the proper word there is turned back, because Tur turning is a big theme in Luke's gospel, turning back. He, he turned back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Right, the Greek word there is Novocastrian from Newcastle. Jesus asked him, were not all 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner, this heathen? And then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Notice here that 10 men get cleansed, but one returns to Jesus. In the context of discipleship here, there are things that we can learn from this one man that came back to Jesus compared to the nine that never returned. So let's have a look here at seven things when it comes to discipleship. Now, it's rare that I ever work in sevens, um, but I'm going to do it and make it happen. So number one this morning, number one, what can we learn from this story? Obedience is seen. Obedience is seen. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priests. Notice this, as they went. In other words, they had to respond. They had to do something. It wasn't a simple case of, master, have pity on us. And Jesus, it's all over you right now. And they got totally healed. No, no, no. They had to do something. 
And as they went, they were healed. Obedience is seen. Go show yourself to the priests. In order for him to do this, in order for him to be the only obedient one amongst the all ten, he had to turn his back on the nine. I'm sure they were going and realized that, oh, flip, that condition is gone right now. And the other guys are like, yeah, mine too. And he's like, I'm going back. I'm going back to thank this guy. And they're like, whatever, whatever, you go back. Just say, say thanks on behalf of us as well. We can't, we can't be bothered. Now notice this. All 10 received grace. All 10 received grace. But there was something different about this one. He turned back to Jesus. He turned back and he came praising God and thanking Jesus. So obedience is seen. Obedience is seen. Number two, not only is obedience seen, but praise is heard. It says, in a loud voice, he shouted out and began to praise in a, in a loud voice. And so, so you can see here that praise is heard. His passion and his, and, and, and his enthusiasm was something, he didn't care what was going on around him. This guy had probably been separated from his family, his kids and all of that, couldn't hug them, but now he's healed. He can't help but come back and go, Jesus, Jesus, thank you for all that you've done. And he did it in a loud voice without volume. He come back praising God in a loud voice. Let's not ever stop praising God for what He's doing in our midst. Let's, let's never get complacent, like I deserve this, and write ourselves off with the other nine. Let's be the one that praises God in our midst for all that He is doing in and through us, both individually and as a church. Obedience is seen, praise is heard. Number three, gratitude is felt. I love this. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked Him. I love that. There is no greater place to be than at the feet of Jesus. I said it before, a man who's flat on his face before Jesus can't fall too far. Gratitude is felt. How do you enter chapel? How do you enter services? How do you enter your seventh service on the weekend? Do you enter with, oh, all right, same old, same old? Or do you enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise? Because however you enter is, is what you're going to draw from that service. What you sow is what you reap. Come in with same old, same old familiar complacency, you'll walk out with greater familiarity and greater complacency. If you come in like, like Enoch all the time, wherever Enoch is, man, the guy does, God do something and he always does something in his midst. Always brings someone across his path, always does something in him. Because he always enters with thanksgiving. Signs of great devoted disciples, obedience is seen, praise is heard, gratitude is felt. Number four, honor is given. Honor is given. This word honor means to, to, give, to give value. So, so I honor you because I value you. If I don't value you, I dishonor you. Okay, so this man comes back to Jesus and he honors Jesus, right? He didn't have to. He could have been like the other nine. But, but, but check this out. Check out verse 17. Jesus asks, were not all 10 cleansed? And the, the Greek word here, katharizo, means physical healing. They all got physical, physically healed. All 10 of them were in his presence. All 10 of them received physical healing. But then when he came back in verse 19, then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. This is not the word for physical healing. This is your faith has made you sozo, which means saved. It's by grace you have been saved, Ephesians 2.8. And that not of yourself, it's a gift from God. It's by grace, charis, you have been sozoed. Through faith, 
and that not of yourself, it's a gift from God. You see, the nine received physical healing. God is so gracious. God is so gracious that He still pours out His love towards people. He still pours out His mercy towards people. He still pours out His grace towards people in the hope that we will respond in faith in the hope that we will return to give praise to what Jesus is doing in our midst. You see, when you value your relationship with Jesus, when you value what he, he did on the cross, you can't help but be transformed. You can't help but give value and honor Jesus as a result of what he's doing. Let's never be people that walk around dishonoring. Let's be a people of honor that give value to God, that give value to one another so that the world can continue to scratch its head and go, what is going on in there? Well, in a world that tries to rip everyone down, we're in a church that's trying to build everyone up because we honor, we value people. Obedience is seen, praise is heard, gratitude is felt, honor is given. Number five, change is expected. Change is expected. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. He expected change to happen. He also expected, were not all 10 cleansed, he also expected all 10 of them to come back and respond to his grace. This is called faith. But only one came back and only one got so much more and stepped into life and life in abundance. Jesus says, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. This one man just stepped into that life, that salvation life that Jesus promises. Change is expected. Can I say to every person in this room, don't think that this semester is going to stay the same. It's going to take some change. It doesn't mean that you sit there and everyone around you is going to change to suit you. No, 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 no. You're not at the center of this thing. Jesus is at the center of this thing. And we, we're going to be transformed into His image, into His likeness. How many of you have already reached perfection? No one. Therefore, we're all on the journey. We're all going from glory to glory, from strength to strength. That means that transformation is going to happen. That means that we need to change some of those attitudes that we have. That means we're going to have to, have to see our roommates the way Jesus sees them. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah, serious. Prepare yourself for marriage. <laughs> oh, Lee, you don't understand the way, the way Jesus sees my roommate is like hell. Yeah, yeah, but you can change that. You can change that. Just start confessing over their life and believe it. And then six months later, they'll probably step into it. Oh, six months, you've got to be kidding me. I just can't stand it. Hey, how long's Jesus put up with you? Who do you want to be like? Jesus, Jesus, all I want is to be like you. You sang it. You sang it with conviction. And he actually believes that that's what you want. So he's committed to that journey with you. If you're not committed to it, don't sing it. <laughs> Change is expected. Number six, signs of devoted disciples. Change is expected. Number six, the source is recognized. Notice here that this Samaritan, man, he's called a foreigner. This Samaritan notices the source. It's God. The source is God. And the one representing God on earth is Jesus. Never take the glory for yourself. God wants to use you mightily. Some of you in this room may even raise 17 people from the dead in your lifetime. It's not about you, it's the one who's dead who's now coming back to life. All glory to God. God's going to use some of you to do, to, to build dynamic ministries because it's in our vision statement. Brian put it in our vision statement that we're called to disciple young people and build dynamic ministries that are going to salt the earth with the gospel message. 
There are people in this room, you're going to have such amazing influence. People are going to come up to you. They're going to want your photo. They're going to want your, your autograph and all of that sort of stuff. Don't worry about it. Give it all back to God. You're really not that big a deal. Because if you departed from the earth, someone else would step in. No problem at all. In the kingdom of God, you're just not that big a deal. We're all equal. We all have equal access. We all have full access to His grace. I'll get the band to come and join me. The source is recognized. God is so good. The reason you do what you do, you see what you see, is because God is so good to us. Let's never forget where His blessing flows, where His favor flows, where His strength, His healing, His provision, where it all comes from. Because if you know it comes from Him, you have no problem giving it away. Number seven. Number seven, not only is obedience seen, praise is heard, gratitude felt, honor given, change is expected, the source is recognized. Number seven, the result is the kingdom expanded. I love this passage of Scripture because here's Jesus on the border of Galilee and Samaria. Samaria is compromised Jews. They stink. Their, 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 their faith is useless. But here's Jesus walking the border and a Samaritan gets saved. Now that a Samaritan saved, guess what just happened? The kingdom just expanded. Everything that we are about is about expanding His kingdom here on earth. That means that every time you encourage someone, you expand the kingdom of God. Why? Because you build someone up. The devil wants to pull them down, you build them up. And it could be your encouragement that causes them to go over to Coles and tell someone over there about Jesus and see them come into the kingdom. It could be your encouragement that sees someone else Skype a friend and go, you'll never guess what happened. And then their friend gets saved on the other side of Canada. Apparently, God can work in Canada as well, not just America. You see, there's no telling what God can do. There's no telling what God can do if we'll commit ourselves to the discipleship program. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough, 100%. Look at the miracles the disciples saw. We want to see the miracles, but we forget the rebukes the correction, the get behind me, Satan, and all of that that they had to go through, the process that they had to go through in order to do what it is that they did. If we'll commit ourselves to the process, we'll see God move in ways that we've never seen before. We'll see Him turn up in places that we've never seen Him turn up before. We'll begin to see Him work through individuals' lives that you never thought possible. And I know some of you came here and you're like, man, you keep talking it, talking it big. It's because we serve a big God. Because we serve a big God and you have a big capacity. Maybe you've not tapped into it. Maybe you come from somewhere that's just talked it down, talked it down, talked it down. And you're like, Lee, I couldn't feel any lower. Listen, you're in the right place. You're in the right place. Allow us to speak into your life. Allow, do the journey with us. And you watch, you begin to grow into everything that God's called you to. Those of you that are in second year, third year, in our degree program now, what are you doing to help disciple those that are new into our community? Let's not take it for granted. Let's not, oh, it's all about me. No, it's not about you. It's about you just building others so that the kingdom of God can continue to increase in Jesus' mighty name. I'm gonna ask you all to stand in this place this morning. God, I thank you for every student. God, you're amazing. Father, you'd bring so many people from so many different nations together in one room. Father, we thank you for all that you're doing in and through each and every life. Father, I pray for those that talk themselves down, that Father, they'll begin to see themselves the way you see them as more than conquerors in Jesus' Name. Father, I thank you for each and every person that Father, as we commit, to the discipleship progress, that Father, we continue to transform from, from strength to strength, from glory to glory, and begin to see things that we've never seen before. Father, I thank You for each and every life in this room. 
And for every person that's represented, for every family that's represented, for every town, for every city, every nation and beyond that is represented in this room. Father, I pray you continue to speak to us. Continue to guide us by your Spirit into all wisdom. Continue to bring comfort where comfort is needed, where there is stress, where there's anxiety, unfamiliarity. Father, I pray that a, a spirit of boldness and courage would rise up within. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you all praise and a faith-filled college set together. Amen.